Hi, my name is Benedict. In this video, I will be walking you through Parry Q. Par being paragraphic, Eve Q, it's not fully parametric. We'll talk about that as we go. I didn't want to call it Par EQ, it just felt inelegant. Uh, and then I realized if we actually elided, as in shared the E, then we ended up with pair, as in to pair things, to whittle away, which is exactly what EQ is about. It's about you know, slicing bits off and adding bits as well. I'm not one of those only cut, never boost kind of cats at all. Put an acute on it to help make emphasize of that EQ so it's a little easier to pair EQ. It is, as you see, a paragraphic EQ. So fully parametric means that every single band will go from 20 to 20. This is not like that. There are a few reasons. And it's one of the reasons I think it actually brings something a little different from the usual suspects. You might be saying, but why would we need another EQ even if it's free? I'm just giving it out of the goodness of my heart because it's done, it's made. Um, I don't see anybody giving me even a dollar for it. Uh, but with uh, things like Q range, which is really good and I've been using for a long time, um, and of course Reaper's Re-EQ, which you can use if you feel like it, uh, Tokyo Dawn's Nova, which is a fine EQ and has a, a good dynamic section in it. Why would we need another one? Well, really it just comes down to workflow and what you end up getting out of it. I found that using this, I was getting different results, things that I wouldn't do using my stock EQs, um, of which there are two or three um, different versions of the same EQ, even just different interfaces give me different results. That's largely what this is. I then sort of sat down and thought, okay, how does this really work? And actually emulated what I had got here with Q range, and it sounded essentially exactly the same. So there's no magic in here. It's just a result of the workflow that this gives you means you're probably going to come out with certain kinds of results. Um, I have used it in battle, not all the way through a mix. I set this up initially to use it in a mix to sort of see how I felt. Some things that seem cool when you're building them just become a nightmare, but it has actually um, won out the uh, the head-to-head the -head and gone to a master already. The track is just not released at the moment. So Aces for me, it just exceeded my expectation and what I got out of the other contenders on the master. Normally I don't spend my time A being components, but I use the usual suspects, use this, and it's like, that actually sounds cooler. So paragraphic means that these bands are relatively fixed. You can see the ranges, and they work, each band will work within that range, but not outside of it. You may feel that compared to the, the Pro Q3 thing where everything is everything is everything, that this is a, is a horribly backward step. And while I get that, and there are times that I would have thought that, as I was saying, the fact that it works differently means that you think differently and you're probably going to get different results from this. So let's do a little bit of AB. I threw this together, being the jazz god that I am. of my own presets with the, the, the synth brass and electric piano and then some low hanging fruit, uh, a upright big bull fiddle and a, a, a rex loop for drums. That's it unprocessed, it's pretty midi, it's a little chunky and bottom heavy. I aimed to be delivering a very light thick and kludgy. A lot more detailed and a lot more focused. No right or wrong. Uh, what I wanted in particular was to bring up a lot more detail in that upright bass so that it wasn't just a big thumpy lumpy sort of a thing. Same with uh, the kit. So just carefully Focusing to get a sound that I wanted. Is it a good or bad sound? Irrelevant. This is merely about, oh, there's an A, B achieved here. un eq EQ. And again, I'll say any EQ can do this. Absolutely any EQ. But I've gotten where I've got and... 
I approach things differently and I think got different results and a different approach from what I would normally do because of the interface. Let's dig into the Beastie itself. Here is a Thor Sawtooth waveform. We've got this big Spectrum EQ and many of you will be saying, but why isn't it exactly the same as Pro-Q3 version 74, blah, blah, blah. Why can't we drag? Well, I don't have the technology to do it. And I think that it's probably an asset in this situation that it forces you to just work a little differently. You have the ability to turn the spectrum on or off. I could have changed what we saw altogether, but it's just unnecessary. So you can turn the spectrum on or off. You can turn the whole device on or off. There is no appreciable difference when nothing is set to do anything. So there is no deliberate inherent colouring. To say there's no colouring is probably a foofy, uh, but there's no deliberate inherent colouring. There's no pretense at analoginess or saturation or whatever. There probably is some if you want to waste your time with plugin dog mode. But you will just see the spectrum come on and off, provided you have eyes turned on. The visual aid you will see is useful, but it does disconnect you from very directly mixing with your eyes, like dragging where your eyes are. You, you do have to feel a little bit, and the fact that you can turn eyes off means that you can mix entirely, or EQ entirely, by feel. And there's a lot to be said about doing that. We have one, two, three, four, five paragraphic bands, so in other words, they are not fully full range, you can adjust them within a certain range. These ones are relatively narrow ranges with a reasonably musical purpose to them. Same with these two, and then this one, which is pretty broad. The reason it doesn't go a full 20 to 20 is simply because the resolution within the knob becomes effectively useless. It's, it's too wide at that point for the knob to be able to be used well. I did try ways of scaling the knobs and what have you, and I was not happy with the results. It did more damage than good. It is possible to turn the bass and the treble from a peak to a shelf. I don't actually like the shelf that it gives me. I considered actually getting rid of this, but some people may like the results that you get. It's up to you. You will see that there's no display of what the EQ curve looks like, but you can obviously see the results of what's happening there. Each of these bands can be turned on and off, as well as we saw the master as well. So there's a reasonable versatility. I decided not to bother having these turnable, onable, offable. I didn't think it was as important, and I try to keep the absolute minimum number of, of features in there. There's no point putting features in that aren't going to serve a practical purpose. Because remember, invariably God's given you a bypass kind of a button, either off board here, or a lot of doors have it up on the top already. So why duplicate whatever's already there? All right. So we've got these five paragraphic bands, so they're adjustable bands within their range. Each has, obviously, its frequency range, its Q, and its gain. We'll get into them later. You've then got a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter. They're relatively gentle. You can make them howl. Now, you may notice that, uh, let's turn that down. <laughs> you may notice that this will get such that it exceeds this graph. This graph is not designed to give you the most amount of information possible. It is not designed to fly um, uh, landers to Mars. Its top is 0 dB, uh, unity. Its bottom is 60 dB. So 60 dB of range, visible. While I can give it a much higher range, it just ends up with more clutter and more more flickery lights and what have you that, that are serving no purpose. Anything below about 60 dB is essentially silent to the average user. It is a broad guide. Also, by choosing the 60 dB range, you get a very clear sense of being able to see the 
partials or overtones in your donor sounds, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so you've got a, a range frequency, but I didn't bother putting the dBs on the side because it was just clutter. Uh, this is not a mixing tool as such, it's just a visualization. So your high pass, you can roll off, fudge in the bottom, and it will go fairly low, and 100, and again, you can be peaky. If your sound is so loud as to go above 0 dB, then you will simply see the, uh, the flickeries clip off the top of the screen probably worth pulling that back a little bit, but it's not gonna do anything one way or another because running at 64 bit, it's got headroom far beyond any sane level should ever reach. So that's your five plus two, so seven bands in which you can do stuff. Let's have a look. Each range is, as I say, deliberately chosen to work an area. So they are named. So you've got the base area, which is, well, going into sub, but 200 to 250. You'll notice some action outside of that. It all depends on how easy you make your peak. Obviously, it can only show a peak where there is activity. I could in theory show this using white noise, but I found that it's not as powerful or effective to hear as it is using a sawtooth. Uh, so it's it's reasonably accurate. I default it to about 120, because that's good punch area. Don't make the mistake of thinking that to get bass, you've got to be boosting down here. You really want punch, let the human brain work out the rest which means that you could well be adding a little bit of punch here and rolling back a little here, which we won't really hear as such in this situation, but that's the sort of thing that you will consider. This is not the most aggressive high pass, so you may well find other situations. You've probably got a mix EQ within your own door that's going to have a more aggressive roll off there. This is a broad tone shaper, while I have, as I said, used this for mastering, was really pleased with the result, it was never the, the intent. But if it gets you there, it gets you there. It, it is got a nice character. That's one. The EQ. The See how these have all got a line across them? Shows you what, rather than putting the same title everywhere. We'll go from really wide. Probably easier to see this on the uh, on the wide range. So really wide to really narrow. Any wider than that, it essentially becomes just a flat level control. They are set a little on the pointy side. I consider even setting them to, to here for default, simply because it does make it very easy to find the frequency you're looking for, but then I thought, now I'll make it something a little bit more musical here. None of this is thought in terms of anything other than what feels good. So please don't write to tell me that it's not a perfect so-and-so of a something or other because I couldn't give a flying banana peel. If it bothers you, work out what point here. Use a Nico to put a mark on your screen and... Okay, so frequency set, our band width, and then our boost and cut. The ability to turn these two into shelves, but as I say, it's, I'm not, not a fan of that outcome. So the way that I think that we would mostly use that is to find the frequency that we're looking to do something with. And again, while tempting to say, well, that's the lowest sound there, I'm going to go... Uh, you probably need to think a little bit more carefully, but this isn't going to be a lesson in how to mix. If you want lessons in how to mix, come see me and hire me to... But this would give us a, a more realistic 
feel that's going to work in a mix. So that's largely how I've been using it, using the ability to both hear and to a very extent see. Oh, this is where I'm doing my thing. Bear in mind this range is very limited because it's designed to work with some precision and that area. And then we move on to the next one. And always this should not be about saying, well, I don't like those frequencies. Maybe they don't like you either, but they're still showing up. So think in terms of, well, what am I doing here? What does the sound need here? If I were looking for... Okay, I'm sort of thinking, well, yeah, in, in the mix, it sounds a bit honky. I found it. All I'm looking for is, okay, that's the honkiness I'm hearing here in this sound. And pull that out. Probably sounds terrible because I'm in cans and you can't hear squat in these things. Uh, wide, oh, okay, then that would be from 100 to 1K, so it ranges from there to there. They're reasonably accurate, but again, I don't care whether Plugin Doctor says otherwise or not. No EQ, especially um, analogs, are ever remotely accurate. They're just a roughly this. The wideband has some features that are a little different. Obviously we can move pretty broadly. So we can even overlap. So we can be saying, oh, I'm boosting that and I'm boosting that. Sounds terrible. But it is deliberately just designed to be a catch-all. So you can, if you've set what you're doing in your low mids and then you go, oh, no, I need to cross over, then you can do it with the wide. And I would recommend that you try and keep the bands where they're intended to be. I mean, do whatever gets you there, but try to keep the bands where they're intended to be, is my advice. So wide range. You'll feel that it gets a little less detailed as we go down. But as I said, where I tried to shape that curve, we ended up with... Less so the same essential functions here, but it's also got, I intended this to be a dynamic EQ and it has some of the features of that, but it is a strange circuit. I actually built this with my 1066 compressor, which I have shown in a video and sometimes it gives great results, sometimes it does nothing. So I'm not sure the future of the 1066, simply because whenever I test it scientifically, I get nil results. Whenever I use it, I either get no real result from it or a, uh, a false positive, as in a, a placebo. It's like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. And you, then you walk away, come back, test it more scientifically. You go, that's a nil result. Or we've just got a little bit of level gain. Um, or sometimes it really does what I want it to do. But the fact that it does it so unevenly, uh, and once I've got it doing something that I think, yeah, that sounds great, I can duplicate it with ADHD's uh, leveling tool really fast. I don't know where that's going. But the circuit, while not a great compressor, delivers something rather interesting here. So again, before you think that doesn't work the same way as, as Tokyo Dawn Lab's Nova, no, it doesn't. It's a kooky circuit. <laughs> So, just again, we can use it to set a frequency and use it to boost and cut like any dynamic EQ. Obviously, it's going to give us different results from this, but it is a kooky circuit. If we put everything down to super fast, you will find distortion. Now, that I'm deliberately left there because from time to time you are going to want to use that. I have found a couple of times where it's just given an interesting result. So you can boost or cut. It will have some dynamic-like properties, but it also has a very, very strange and bizarre curve, which is well, odd at very best, um, seriously wrong in reality. But the reason that I've left it here is because sometimes it provides a little bit of movement 
um, and possibly distortion, which is actually very attractive in the sound. If you don't want the dynamic thing going or want to just be able to A, B, a, B the dynamic, then you can A, B that whilst leaving the, the whole thing in. So it's, it's a kooky feature that you can use or not use, all depend upon what you want to do. I mean, same thing. Find where you think, yep, there's something nice there. And boost or cut. Treble is going to be interesting. It goes up to 12, but not up to 20. There's just not a lot of sense going up there. Uh, in the jazz example, uh, I actually used a combination of the low pass and the, the treble with a little bit of a cut to actually get rid of this sort of digital fizz, overly detailed thing out of there, which actually allowed the drums to seem more clean and clear than having to fight through the fizz up top here. No right or wrong, you've got to work out how that goes. And again, we've got this output. No attempt to put any metering on here because it's not accurate enough. The door probably has some kind of metering, assuming you even need to level match. As, as a general rule when I'm mixing, I don't level match. If this has gained a few dB, I'm happy enough to because I've been around long enough to realize the difference between a level gain and a tone adjustment. And besides, it just never really matches up. So you can use your door meters to decide what works. For you. There's no right, there's no wrong there, but it is a useful feature to have. And then you can just of course, you can turn that off. Uh, in terms of CPU horsepower, I haven't noticed any difference, but I've got a reasonably powerful i7. If you're on a, on a really simple system, well, this probably won't run for you because it's a VST3, a 64-bit VST3. I'm not putting out 64-bit um, 64, well, so 64 2.4s or 32-bits or anything like that. It's just VST3. Get up with, uh, get up with the current. So that's it. It's quite simple, but it's simplicity in forcing you to say, well, what am I doing in this area? 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 Is quite different from the grab something and move it from here to there to here to there to here to there. That has its advantages. Like I say, Q range I like. I think is is a very, very good EQ and so good and everything that I, I, I've never bothered to invest in a better one. Um, even though I must say that the Kitchoff uh, did did impress and intrigue me quite a lot. Uh, but this says, okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing there? So in terms of a mixing aid, while I don't fan of mixing aids, there is a case to be raised to sort of say, well, okay, buddy, what are you planning on doing with this bit? What are you planning on doing with this bit? Because that's simply what these bands are set up to do to work on those particular areas they're not as rigid as a graphic eq which is like it's that frequency or you can just you know uh this gives you a, a good range in which to work to say well okay which is working in this situation for you so there's no more to it than that all right, if you have questions, please, not about is there a Mac version, there isn't a Mac version, no, no Mac version, there isn't going to be one, it is a VST3, uh, it is only supposed to be available via my Ko-fi um, and my website through to Ko-fi, so if you are posting this on some other site, you need to link to my site or Ko-fi or both of them, uh, you must not 
be posting it on your own website as your own download because that is seriously, seriously uncool. It's like, I'm giving this away for free. Yes, it's a leader to get eyes in front of me. If you are using it as a free way to get eyes in front of you, then that is a big fuck you. And once I find it, and invariably I do, either because people show me or I just Google my own product and go, then... Um, then you are going to hear from me and it will not be polite. Sorry to have to say that, but I get sick of people doing that to me because if you want to give away something unique for free, great, go make it yourself. If you can't make it yourself, pay me and I will make you something which you may give away for free. But if you simply steal it and try to steal my thunder, not cool, because you wouldn't like the other way around. If you came home after work and found me sitting there on your couch watching The Simpsons on your TV, drinking your beer, I bet you'd be having a chat to me with a baseball bat pretty quick. Yep, that's exactly how I'm going to feel when you do it to me. Um, yeah, There really should be no great need for questions on this, to be honest. It is very simple to work once you understand its concept, which is paragraphic, uh, rather than parametric, uh, and that it is deliberately trying to be a, a different approach from the uh, the pro filter type of approach. That's it. Get out there, have fun. If you find that you are struggling to do this, then please ask me. I am more than happy to either do the work for you. I am a professional mix engineer uh, or if you don't want it mixed for you and you want to do it yourself but you don't have the skills and experience it's not about skills it's more about experience then I am happy to teach you as a uh, as a as a master student relationship just understand that it's never a case of saying oh well for base you put it at x number of frequencies and x number of db up or down because that's not how mixing works. It's an art form. So we'll be going through giving you the experience to be able to understand how to make the decisions that your piece needs. Because as I said, the decisions that I made here were around what I wanted this piece to say, what I wanted the listener to feel when they heard it. Is it any good? No. <laughs> it's definitely rotten because I'm a useless player. But you should hopefully hear the difference between the A and B that we've clarified and given this a different sort of a presence. Get out there, have fun.